so we are going to look at free body diagram example number four. It reads, a girl is sledding down a slope that is inclined at 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal. A moderate wind is aiding the motion by providing a steady force of 105 newtons parallel to the motion of the sled. The combined mass of the girl and the sled is 65 kilograms and the coefficient of friction between the runners of the sled and the snow is 0 0.15. Now all the details of the numbers we aren't going to worry about so much in this example, but this might show up again when we analyze the motion of that girl on the sled. Let's draw a free body diagram and look at the interactions of this object. So what is our object? Well, that's the girl and the sled together. We're going to call them one object together. So what are the interactions happening? Well, let's just draw a picture real quick of our situation. Here we have a girl sitting on her sled, happy as can be. There's her funky winter hat. And the hill, it says, or the slope, is inclined at 30 degrees. So here she is going down an incline of 30 degrees down the slope. What are some interactions acting on that girl? Now, you've had three examples of free body diagrams and interactions, so I really encourage you to pause, draw all of your interactions, or draw your free body diagram, and then check it with the video. Um, or if you just need to keep working on this process, of course, keep going. But try to make this a uh, process that's informing you of where your weaknesses are. All right, so one force acting on the object. We always have gravity, so let's do the force of gravity. That is between, and I'm going to just say the girl. We're going to assume that the sled is part of her and the earth. And that acts in the downward direction. And again, I'm going to develop the free body diagram as I develop my interactions. So here is my girl on the sled. And the force of gravity is acting down. And that, of course, is equal to mass times gravity. All right? So she's interacting with the hill, so there's contact there. So that must be a normal force. So we also have the force, the normal force, and that's between the girl, because she's in contact with the hill. Now, how does that contact look? Remember, the normal force is always perpendicular to the point of interaction. So the hill's angled at 30 degrees. The normal force is going to be perpendicular to that. So there is our normal force. If we think about our coordinate system, our x, our normal coordinate system, our Earth horizontal coordinate system, this is angled. Here's my 30 degree angle. And my normal force is perpendicular to that 30 degrees. All right. The next is, well, there's a headwind, or a wind. And it's aiding the motion. So we have the force of the wind, that's between the girl and the wind, or the air, whatever you want to call it, and it's helping the motion. It's in parallel to the motion of the girl. So that's acting down and at an angle parallel to the girl's motion. And I did forget to draw my sort of arrow on my normal force. So my wind force is acting along the slope. So this is my 30 degrees. There's my 30 degrees. All right. And then finally, we have friction. Friction always opposes the motion, acts in the opposite direction of the motion. So we have the force of friction, that's our curly F. That's between the girl and the hill, the rudders, the slope and the hill. And that's opposite the motion. So if the girl's driving down this way, the frictional force will be in that direction opposite the motion. And again, this is going to be our theta equal to 30 degrees. Now, just as a reminder, we said our normal force was going to be perpendicular if that is 30 degrees. Th this is 30 degrees. That makes this 60 degrees, which makes this angle also 30 degrees. So there's our angle, 30 degrees there. All right, any other forces acting on this girl? Nope, those are the only four forces, the only interactions. Only interactions that I can write to, forgot to put my little arrow on that one, that I can write two objects, or two interacting objects, are real forces. 
and I have four forces acting on my sweater. All right, good job.